You've pressed the red button. Now, here's something of no value. Stuart, I was really pleased that this week's show was about has political correctness gone mad? Uh, because, like you, I, I think it has. In fact, it's, it's gone so mad that you probably can't even say the phrase political correctness has gone mad these days. You'd have to say something like political correctness has gone mentally challenged. Yeah, you would, yeah. yeah. Coffee and Anne would look at himself in a slimming mirror because he'd become very uh, concerned about being overweight. And he was overweight, uh, Coffee and Anne, as a result of his habit of starting every day with a breakfast of a coffee and a naan. <laughs> coffee and naan every day. A coffee and a naan. Coffee and naan. What would you like for breakfast, coffee and naan? <laughs> yes, please. There were some serious issues raised by the programme. Right. First of all, coffee and naan, coffee and a naan. Mm. Um, what other UN Secretary Generals could you make that joke about? None. No, Ban Ki Moon? <laughs> no, I no? don't think so. What? No. What? what? Ban Ki Moon? Ban Ki Moon? That's not a food, is it? No, does but, it have to be a food? No, well, it does fit for it to fit in to that to that bit. I, I mean, was thinking of a bank on the moon. A bank on the moon. Well, he could have done that. Yeah. He could have gone if he'd gone a bank on the. Be a different episode. I mean, you know, it wasn't. I, it was a flimsy idea. Uh, coffee and Ant, right? Mm -hmm. And then the more I did it, I thought this is so pointless. If it's done at enough length, it mm -hmm. may become funny. Mm -hmm. But um. But it has now gone too far. It has gone too far. It's, to the extent it's, that the the United Nations mm -hmm. have passed a resolution at the Security Council. Right. Um, imposing sanctions on, on you. On me? Yeah. Right. Well, I'm not allowed to have food or weapons. You can have food <laughs> for weapons. I mean, oh, right, yeah. right. Trade-off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, no offence was meant by it. Again, I mean, there's no... If there's... Whatever the purpose of this series is, it certainly wasn't to cause offence to Kofi Annan, who mm. I think is... Should have... I mean, I think he should have been made just like a fascist dictator of the world and then everything would have been in a lot better state. He seems like a great bloke. The only problem is that rather like Bush had a shoe thrown at him to discredit him. I can imagine yeah. if he were the king of the world and people were furious with him, he may have coffee spat at him and no one's thrown at him. Yeah, yeah. So it's just as well he isn't. It's just as well he isn't, yeah. yeah as, as you said, fascist yeah. dictator of the world. world. Yeah. Good. Now, these days, I mean, you, you equate political correctness with uh, health and safety mm. legislation, uh, which I, I found very amusing, but it's also quite apt, isn't it? Because you, you can't stab someone these days without having to fill in a form first. No, you know? no Or wear I mean, a hard hat. Or wear a hard hat, yeah, uh, yeah. Just watching the show, I thought, I thought, good on you. You know, you sort of nailed, nailed it and, you know, that, that lot and what, what they tell you to do. And, and well, it's a, it's a... I mean, what's the, the, one of the most popular programmes on BBC Two is Top Gear, and I thought, yeah. for some way, we can get that audience chuckling along. Within this first series. But I imagine... Um, it doesn't really go much further than what you've covered already in the first three shows. No. So does that mean that by the end of this first series, you would have more or less said all that you want to say well, about I've, stuff that exists? Not only have I said everything that I want to say, I've said everything that I can say. Mm -hmm. And what I need to happen now mm -hmm. is I need some personal crisis to happen to me mm -hmm. so that I've got something to write about in the future. Okay. But it's difficult to know how to move forward. I mean... Um, what helped me before, when I'd run out of ideas, was being involved in Jerry Springer the Opera, mm -hmm. being a focus of a protest, gave me lots of ideas to write about what that was mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. So basically, something really bad needs to happen. So uh, for the sake of the second series, yeah. which, which is prevalent, really, it's preeminent, mm -hmm. would you go out and um, harm someone, kidnap someone, fall in love with, marry, and then reject someone, yeah. uh, bury someone, uh, to, in order to generate material that you could draw from well that's four th that's four things well I that's four shows need, i know i need so another you only two. Need two more and you've two got more a second and series. i'll be all right yeah if i do the things you suggested i'm uh -huh. basically i become a, an outsider in society i'll be yeah. on the run from justice yes um it, it would be gives hard it more of a reality feel i know well. but it would be hard yeah. to make a program under those circumstances uh -huh. as a sort of fugitive it would be difficult to evade capture mm -hmm. and yet also turn up filming in rehearsal on a regular well, basis. Well, that assumes that you sort of commit the sequence of crimes um, badly and leave so many clues that we all know it's you. Yeah. Whereas if you're clever mm. uh, and put a lot of 
preparation and thought into it, maybe get other people involved in it. Um, yeah. you know, I mean, I know a guy who for like seven grand can, do you know what I mean? But, yeah. but, but no one would actually know that. that, that yeah. Someone would piece together. it together though, watching the programme. But, but watching the programme, so the programme will have gone out by oh, then, right, so that's right. fine, that's fine. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I've got that level of commitment. Okay. Just, just a thought. Mm. Just thought. I mean, it's up to you, Stuart, really. Mm. It's a, I mean, either, either you're in this for the long term or you're not. You know, either you've got to, you've got to show commitment to this as a sort of professional, ongoing yeah, career. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know, it's something I'd have to think about. Okay, yeah, all, yeah. all I'm saying is the BBC needs to know yep. uh, by this time next week whether you will kill someone for a second series. Right. Okay? Okay. Right. Uh, uh, just and, uh, just to weigh up this. And who is I'm, it? I'm, I'm told it's sort of in the balance, right. and this one thing will just, right. you know, right. it will give it that. Um, I think the word they used was edge. Edge. It will give, give it oh, that. They like edgy stuff, don't they? Yeah. 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 Uh, but I mean, the important say, thing is, I'm, I'm approaching that age like mm -hmm. like, like Tony, Tony Blair or Frank Skinner, where you start to think about your legacy. Yes. What is my legacy? Yes. And is my legacy that this series, we don't know if this series has been well received or not, no. I don't know. No. Or would my legacy be as the man who killed and committed crimes to mm. get a second series? Right. Would I look back on this and think, I regret carrying out those crimes in order to secure a second series? Or would I think I was really onto something then? Mm. And it's difficult to know, you know. I was in a, in a minicab uh, a few months ago, and the cab driver turned around to me, apropos of nothing, uh, and he said that in his opinion, the most oppressed minority in the world today were, mo uh, were I'll say that again, um, because I fumbled it, and that's one of the beauties of recording things rather than <laughs> broadcasting live uh, in many ways. That's the purpose of what we're trying to achieve tonight, a seamless <laughs> television programme in which you are just lab rats. Um, <laughs> although, of course, under the BBC's new charter of scrupulous honesty, what I'm about to do is illegal. Believe me, has gone mad. I was in a, a black cab, which I always feel is more likely to carry a driver of reactionary opinions than a mini cab. <laughs> so it was worth doing a retake, if only for that. <laughs> uh, character development of the man. Previously, he was a, a mini cab driver. People thinking, well, some of them are all right. But now I've said he was a black cab driver, you're already primed to dislike him.